Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. Somebody say, I'm glad the Lord loves me. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm glad he loves me and I'm glad he saved me. Come on, give God a hand praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor and he's worthy of all our praise. Amen. I don't know about you all, but I'm excited this morning. Uh, the daddy's girl, the Chuck's Pearls and daddy's girls, real talk with daddy's girl, left a oil in the atmosphere. It's, all, it's always saturated in here, but it's like a little bit thicker this morning. And I'm grateful to be in the presence of the Lord one more time. Come on, give God a hand raise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glad to see my friend, Mr. John, in the house tonight, here today. Amen. Glory to God. Good to see you, Mr. John. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, I want to get into the word. Uh, I told my wife I don't want to be long today. We have a lot going on, but I'm so grateful for uh, the leadership team of this house. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I say things at times I know I have to retract my statements, but I'm so grateful for what we have as far as a team. We, we've had big numbers and small numbers, but this group here, some way, y'all figure a way to make it happen. And I just want you all to know from my mouth to your ears that I greatly appreciate every one of you, those that are in-house and those that are watching online. I'm so appreciative of how you allow us to be free to do some things. Amen. We, when we we got we to gotta do some reconnecting and go higher. But what we're doing now, man, it is sweatless. Uh, I don't know how you all get it done, but I'm grateful for each and every one of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know some of you are dealing with some personal things, but you still get it done. And we are grateful. We, don't take, we do not take it for granted. Amen. We're going to go, go ahead and grab your word. Amen. We're going to give you a scripture. And we're going to pray so we can get ready to, sh to share. Amen. And uh, you all can start the clock back there already. Amen. Um, the Lord is good, amen. Yes, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. In uh, 1 Timothy, the sixth chapter, that's where we're going first, and then we're going to read scripture and we, we will pray. Amen. 1 Timothy, the sixth chapter, uh, verse number 10 is where we're going. Amen. 1 Timothy 6 and 10. We're going to read it from the King James and the New Living so that in all our getting we have what? Understanding. Amen. And all that I get and we get understand. Excuse me. Hallelujah. First Timothy 6 and 10. And if you have it, read with me. For the word of the Lord reads, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith. Somebody say they erred from the faith. They erred from the faith. And pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Not because of the money, they, because they erred from the faith. Now they have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Then it says in verse 11, and it encourages us, say, but thou, O man of God, or woman of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. It said all that then in verse 12. It tells us what? Fight the... Say that again. Fight the... The good fight of faith. Somebody says a good fight. good fight. Then it say, lay hold on eternal life, whereto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I want to use my focus verse. It's going to be verse number 12. Verse number 12. If we would have a leadership training, I would say this would be preaching 101. I want to use for my focus verse, amen, or teaching 101. Fight the good fight. Verse 12, and the New Living Translation says the same thing. Fight the good fight for the true faith. Somebody say it's a fight. It a fight. Amen. I want to talk today, amen, on recognizing the enemies of your faith. Recognizing the enemies of your faith. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we praise and we thank you for another opportunity. God, to share your word with this, your people. We give you all the glory. 
We give you the honor and the praise, God. We ask that you be in the midst of us, even now, saturate this atmosphere, saturate our ears for hearing, our hearts for receiving, God. But most of all, God, we want to contain what we receive on today. So we rebuke the hand of the enemy. We, be, we bind distractions. We bind malfunctions. God, anything that would interrupt the word today, we bind every tired spirit, Lord God. We ask you now to get us focused in harmonious unison in you so that the Holy Spirit may speak expressly. Mold these lips of clay. Let me not speak anything in the flesh, God, but that you get all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, say, there's an, there's an enemy of your faith. Of your faith. Amen. And we look at this text, amen. We've been preaching on faith. This is our faith teaching and preaching month. Amen. And it's, it's designed, it's set up intentionally to push us to our next place in God. Amen. I believe if we're going to finish this year strong, somebody say we're going out with a high hand. I believe if we're going to finish strong, we must intentionally, amen, Challenge those things that oppose our faith. We got to have strong faith. Amen. Uh, one of the daughters, uh, the baby's in the house. She's in the neighborhood now. You say, have strong faith, strong finish. Sister Brianca David Seller, she used to sing this song. Strong, y'all remember that? Strong faith, strong finish. And every time I see her in the social media going through something, I send her that song again. You got It's about your faith. And many of us, and we talk about an enemy. We say an enemy of our faith. What is our faith? Our faith is our trust our confidence in God and in his words, our confidence in God and in his words, our trust, our belief, our trust, our confidence in God and in his word. But most of all, catch this, faith is simply the word of God. Somebody say faith is the word of God. I'm not going to make this deep this morning. Faith is the word of God. So if you're going to have faith, if you're going to be strong in your faith, amen, you got to get you a dose, a daily nourishment of the word of God. Anything that you're lacking in, if you don't eat right, you say you're fasting for 20 days and 30 days, amen, but you don't drink water, you don't nourish your body, you're going to be malnourished, not spiritually strong, amen, you're going to be malnourished. And so even when the enemy came after Jesus, he was fasting in the desert, wasn't it? 40 days and 40 nights, the enemy came and offered him food, that which was lacking. He didn't offer him water, amen, so if you deny yourself something, amen, that is needed to fight, Glory to God, you'll be malnourished or you will be weak. Come on, you'll be weak. Tell your neighbors, it's not good to be weak. It's not good. So when we think of an enemy, we think of an opposer. We think of one that comes against us, uh, one that is dishonest in their dealings with us. Amen. One that comes to take that which is important to us, an enemy. Paul here in the text talks to his spiritual son. He instructs him. To fight the good fight of faith. Fighting for my faith, for my belief, my trust, and my confidence in God and in his word is a good fight. I owe it to myself. Somebody say, I owe it to myself. I owe it to myself to fight for what I believe God said is mine. I owe it to myself, amen, to fight for what I believe he has promised me through his word. Amen. If I can find it in the word, amen, I owe it to myself to fight for it. Amen. Somebody say, I refuse to lay down. The issue is, amen, we don't necessarily recognize our enemies. Most of the time, amen, go to God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Most of the time, amen, we think of enemies, we think of an opponent, we think from a natural place. But most of the things we deal with, amen, in this natural realm, watch this, they are conceived in the spiritual realm, amen. They come through, amen, a person or a being or entity or deity, whatever we look at, amen. They're born into the natural realm. And so when we fight, we fight from a natural place. Are y'all hearing me? This born in the spiritual realm because we walk by faith and not by, amen. Faith is the substance of what? Things. Hope for the evidence of things not seen. Amen. So we fight from a spiritual place. Amen. If we know who we are in God. So we start dealing with the spirit rather than the person or the thing. Y'all better come on here. Amen. A lot of times your kids go to school and come back. You be like, that ain't not my child. What's wrong? Your child be acting up. Your husband, your spouse be acting up. And you say, you getting on my nerve. But it's really not them. It's a spirit. Born in the spiritual realm, amen, attaches itself to them, and it manifests in the natural realm, and we've been programmed to fight what we can see. 
Oh, come on here. If we fight in the fight of faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So it's some stuff that's born from a place we can't see, but it's manifested itself in the natural. So we have been programmed to fight what we can see instead of dealing with the spirit behind the thing. Today I was going to talk about, amen, my faith is on trial. And the Lord was dealing with me last night. He said, yeah, your faith been on trial. Your faith stays on trial. The enemy is the, enemy is the accuser of the brethren. And so when we're talking faith, anytime you believe God for something big, the enemy are already coming against your faith. So your faith is always on trial. But when you go to, to court, amen, you're literally in a legal fight. You're in a legal battle, amen. So it's already a fight. So I want to use the word fight. Some of y'all ain't never been in a fight in your life. <laughs> amen. We know what to do if a fight started. You don't know how to start left or right or headshot. Or, no, you don't know what to do because you, know, you see stuff you see on TV fighting and wailing. Sometimes the best fight is to move out of the vicinity. Sometimes the best defense it's an easy offense or to removing yourself from the situation. But in your faith, you don't have the space to remove yourself. He's after your faith. He's after what God has promised. And so when Paul instructs him to fight, he lets us know, amen, it's a good fight. To fight means to contend in any manner. To strive vigorously against something or someone. Again, to contend. To contend. In any manner. Whether it's in word, I'm going to speak against this thing. Whether it's physical, I'm going to stand against this thing. Yes. But I realize, amen, that it is born. If I'm not careful, I have to realize this thing is born in the spiritual realm. So I have to make sure when I start to fight, I consult the spiritual realm. I fight through faith. I fight through the word of God. Somebody say, I need the word. So the enemy comes, amen, to, if he's contending, amen, in any matter. Mean, so if, what am I fighting? I'm fighting anything that's contending or striving vigorously against my faith. Anything that's fighting against what I'm believing God for, what God has said to me. It is something born from the spiritual realm, now manifesting in the natural realm, and is fighting against your faith. Many of us have been arguing and fighting and holding grudges against people who were under the influence of another spirit when they came against you. Now we're holding grudges against a person, and they look back, and they don't know why they came against you. They don't know why they did what they did. They look back at what they did and they say, how did I let myself do this? Somebody said it was a spirit. You ever did something in your life, man, look back and say, man, I can't believe I was like that. How about me before you got saved? Come on. We, have, we got some professional uh, profanicizers in this church, man. I mean, we could cuss full sentences, name but cuss words, complete sentences, commas, exclamation points. Amen. Because that's we were under the spirit. We used to talk about stuff having, amen, a short fuse. I'm bothering me, I got a short fuse. That was a spirit. And as I grow and as I mature in the word, amen, somebody say, well, after 30 years, you're just not getting mature. As I grow and as I mature, I find out, amen, that the enemy, the enemy, the things that come from the spiritual realm, the enemy does not want us, do not want us to come into the fullness of who we are in God. The Bible says that we're ever learning. Never coming to the knowledge of the truth. We're always learning, but we're never full grown. We fight to talk about the perfecting of our faith. Come on. We're always growing. So when we stop eating, we stop growing. Y'all hear me? If you stop eating. So, so something's contending. Amen. John 10, 10 says the enemy comes, the thief cometh. But, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Write those words down. He comes but for to steal, kill, and destroy. So when, he's, when I'm under attack, when an attack comes, I know why he's coming. 
He only shows up for three reasons. The enemy cometh. The thief cometh not. That's what the scripture said. The thief cometh not. But for to steal. So when he shows up, he shows up with a threefold assignment in your life to steal, number one, to take that which does not belong to him. He immediately comes after the word. Once you get a seed, see this song, the Bible says the enemy comes immediately to snatch that word which was sown. So when he's coming after the word, when he's on your nerve before you get out of the church, you know that's a word that you need. You hear that particular word, amen, 30 minutes, 40 minutes of word, but you hear, you hear a particular word, amen, that can change your life, and the enemy comes immediately. He's not after the whole message. He's after that particular word. Comes but not, but for. If you go back and read that scripture, it says the thief cometh not. Then it says but for to steal, comma, and to kill, and it's a conjunction, comma, and to destroy. So he's not just coming to steal. He coming to kill and destroy. Still, take that which does not belong to him. To still means to remove it secretly and unaware. So when I get a word, he might not be loud, but he can steal it. The enemy pickpocketed the word from some of us. Pickpocketed it from our minds. Before the word is sown good, before you get through that, you know, because some of us got cloudy mind, we got a stony mind, we got a stony heart. Before we can get all this other stuff out of the way, he come and snatch you. But just in case it get in, he want to kill it. Take the life out of it. Kill it before it gives birth. Try to kill it in seed form. I know I'm preaching good. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. I'm talking to myself. He'll kill it. Amen. And if he don't kill it, he'll try to simply destroy it. He'll destroy your belief in it. He say, amen. He only shows up for one reason. He won't show up to aggravate you. He's not even after your physical. He after that word. When you get a word from God and everything in you stands up and say, I know God said this to me. The enemy said, no, I got to stop him. I got to stop Robert. Robert, Penny, Robert got a vision of who I say he was. I got to get it. I got to stop him. Amen. He comes immediately. Come out of a hard situation and say, oh, God, I'm believing you for something. Go through a hard time in your life. Then tell God, I'm believing you for something. And you get a word that you know is from God. Amen. And you start moving in that word. That enemy comes immediately. Mess with your mind. Come on, y'all. And if you don't know who you are, you'll give in to it. Son, hey, son, go get I had a, a rag on my desk. I think it's brown. Amen. If you don't know who you are, you'll start fighting from a natural place. You ever find yourself in an argument with somebody? And when you finish the argument, you still wasn't satisfied? I mean, you gave in your best words. Because you fight from a natural place. I'm telling you, man, when you get to this place, when you know where you're fighting from, there's such a peace that comes over you. Victory. Amen. We're not fighting for the victory, fighting from the victory. Yes, Somebody gave me a phone call yesterday, and they was trying to say something. I was saying, okay, amen, all right. They was expecting a different response. I'm like, man, I'm so far past that. You're going to do what you're going to do. And when you need me, I'll still be here, but I'm not coming where you're at. I love you, but I love you from here. Because if I come there, I got to deal with the spirit that you, can, you still want to play with. And I don't have time to play with that spirit. You ever love somebody, but you didn't like the spirit that they operated in? I love you, but I hate that spirit. Come on, you got to start calling and say, you got to start telling them, say, I hate that spirit you operating in. It's an ugly spirit. Come on, somebody. It's a nasty spirit. It's a lying spirit. Come on, somebody. You got to start calling this stuff out. And a person might not know until you say it to them. Saying you are a liar. I ain't the devil. Oh, you get the devil using you. They be talking to you say the devil is a liar. Well, who you calling the devil? No, I'm talking about the spirit. They might not know. When they start lying... The Bible says Satan, who is the father of lies. Yeah. Yeah. When they start lying, you call, it, call them a lie. They don't want to hear it because yeah. they give me into the spirit. Yeah. Uh -huh. The Bible talks about the Lord giving them over to a reprobate mind. Yeah. So they'll do those things which are not common. They do that which they know is wrong because they've been given over to a reprobate mind. That reprobate is the spirit that comes from the enemy realm, from the, uh, the devil's realm, the enemy's realm. Yeah. It comes from a place that is not natural for us. 
to do crazy things. So look, let me get to the word. Amen. It, Paul tells him to fight the good fight. Tell your neighbor, say, don't get tired of fighting. Here is the greatest enemy or the greatest hindrance to our fight. And what you may not know, the greatest hindrance to our fight. The greatest. Not, not that I'm not, I don't speak in tongues. Not that I'm not saved. But a lot of us got saved and that's all we did. We gave our life to Christ. We got church membership. We sow our seed. We do all those things. And with our heart, we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart all those things, but we stop growing. We show up at church. We hear a good word, but we stop growing. Why is this possible? Amen. Romans 10 and 17. Write it down. Amen. It so says, so then faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Another translation says faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. Not worship music. Some of us follow artists that are not even saved. They say I'm a Christian artist. They don't say they're a believer. I'm a Christian artist. Come on, amen, amen. That means, amen, they sing because they know that it is, it is a, a, a lucrative source of income. It's their job. They leave off the stage and help go have drinking parties and secret orgies and all this type of stuff. Some of our, some of our number one artists are the nastiest ones out there. And they sing to us, we hear the little she and the spirit coming off of some of them. Not off of what they're saying. The spirit is coming from them. It's penetrating our hearts. And we wonder why we're struggling. Instead of, before you hear any, before you hear any of them that you like, Kurt Franklin, Chandler Moore, anybody that you like, I'm not saying they're the ones, but before you hear any of their music, I say, Lord, guard my heart. Let me hear what I'm supposed to hear. Let me receive what I'm supposed to Don't let this transfer from them to me. But I want to hear your word. The word has to go first. The Bible says, guard your heart. God, my heart, God. Why have I say God, my heart? God, your heart. For, for, for all of it flows the issues of life. With all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. When I don't guard my heart, when I don't guard my, my gate to my soul, out of it flows the issues of life. The number one hindrance to the word of God, the number one, I believe, this is just what the Lord told me, is a lack of word. Not a lack of church. A lack of word. Not that you're not hearing the word, but you're not applying the word. All, right. All the enemies of our faith, every enemy that we make contact with is in some way connected to a lack of knowledge of who the word says that we are. A lack of knowledge of the word. If I don't know what the word says about me, I believe what the enemies say about me. When the word tells me I'm the head and not the tail, above only, never beneath, I'm the lender, not the borrower, the enemy can't tell me I ain't going to never be nothing. Because I'm a head and not the tail. I'm not looking at my bank account. I'm the head. Amen. I'm going to start acting like the head and not the tail. I'm going to start acting like or living like I'm above only and never beneath. And when I start saying I'm the lender and not the borrower, my financial situation is going to change because I'm going to get around other people that believe they're the lender. I ain't going to be around folks all the time talking about they broke. Doom and gloom mentality. Come on, somebody. We barely making it. Amen. Times are hard. Times ain't hard for me. I'm living my best days right now. I got to surround myself with people that know who they are in God. Faith is mean, coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When my family comes under attack, I got to go to what the word says. Yes, if I don't know what the word says, I say what the world is saying. Y'all yes. catch what I say. If I don't know what the word say, I'll say what the world is saying. Yes, That's why we got to stay out of social media so much. Right. Yeah. It's feeding us our identity now. Likes and followers and I got 3,000 followers. I got a million followers. Well, who are you following? Come on. I promise you, in this season of your life, 
the way technology is changing things, if you don't have a true relationship with God, you're going to end up following something that's going to die. You're going to follow something that is trending. If you're not following the word, when it dies off, amen, everything that it fed you is going to die. Spiritual. If you're spiritually dead, amen, you just will be on the enemy's side. Come on. Heaven and earth should do what? Pass away. But the church is going to forever stand. Gospel music is going to forever stand. His word. So the enemy come, when you hear that word that changes your life, you know you hear something in your spirit, boom. Your, the Holy Spirit in you that you have not allowed to speak lately, he begin to stand up in you. As soon as you hear that word, the enemy like, oh, she got her word. I know she was shouting early, but now she got her word. I know she was singing early, but now she got her word. I got to get that word before it gets sown. I got to get that word from her before she start acting on it. Come on. But it's going to say heaven and earth should pass away. But the word, everything that I believe for in the earth can die off. Amen. But if I get that word in me. And the scripture says his word is what? Settled in heaven. So if, if thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth. In earth as it is in heaven. So when I get that word in me. I'm fighting for this. I got to recognize the enemy. The enemy ain't concerned about me, sir. He's concerned about how I'm going to act on this word. He, well, he's concerned about what I'm going to do with this word. The scripture tells me, call those things that are not as though they were. Pastor, I've been, I've been calling it. I've been calling. Have you been calling it with your mouth or have you been calling it with your heart? Because the tongue will say what it want to say. The Bible calls the tongue the unruly member. You can train it to say some stuff, but if you never get it in your heart, it's not manifested. If I get it in my heart, I keep on doing it until it manifests. Come on. Hide this word in your heart that you don't want sin against it, that you don't interrupt the process of this word. And if I just so happen to miss, and if I just so happen, amen, y'all can do that. If I just so happen, amen, to sin against the word, I know I can repent. Because the word tells me if I confess my sin, he's faithful and just to forgive me. So when I miss it, I'm going back to the word. I miss. David said, Lord, it's against thee and thee only have I sinned. David told him, I messed up. I did it against you. I ain't do it against Bathsheba. I ain't do it against Nate. I ain't do it against nobody. I did it against you. Because I'm your representative. I ain't looking for nobody to call me out. I'm going to call myself out. Somebody say, call yourself out. When you start charging yourself in the word, amen, nobody got to hold you accountable, amen. I'm accountable in the absence of accountability, so I don't need nobody to tell me I'm wrong. When you grow up like that, you can't be embarrassed. Y'all better catch that. When you really grow up immature, they can't embarrass you. I saw a pastor and them argue. We sure were. We had a good argument. And we made up right afterwards. Amen. We got it right right afterwards and got back on the devil's head. Come on, somebody. We apologize to each other to put our foot on the enemy's neck. Why? Because he didn't want us to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God that he can exalt us in due time. That's what the word tells me. I can exalt myself. But if he exalt me, the enemy can't pull me down. So I'm not going to walk in pride. Why? Because pride go before a fall. God resists the proud. And give grace to the humble. That's what the word says. So I got to humble myself so he can elevate me. Y'all better come on here. The enemy not after your money. He not after your relationship. He after the word that's in you. Because you don't know what the word say about. Because faith is the word of God. This is what the God, God told me. He says, tell the people, be determined to hold on to the word they get. Because we know the definition of faith. We know all about faith. But if I can give you one definition, faith is the word of God. So if I'm struggling, I identify where I'm struggling at. I'm going in my word. Paper Bible, electronic Bible, I'm finding it. You all remember those things they used to give us? It said if you had anxiety, go to this. If you got anger, go to this. Why we don't have those no more? Come on. 
Y'all better find those little cards. It's a card. Some, some people got Bibles that's got it in it. Amen. Frustrated. Read this. Meditate. Come on. The Bible talks about the word. Therein do I meditate day and night. Meditate day and night. Amen. Psalm the first chapter. Blessed is the man that walked not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, which is the word of God. And in his law does he meditate day and night. Then it says, because of this, he's like a tree planted by rivers of water. Because I'm by that word. Then the scripture says, bring forth fruit in every season. I don't have no drought, man. My fruit just not as big all the time, but I'm always producing. Come on, somebody. Say, so it may not be big all the time, but I still, somebody shout, I still got fruit. I, it may not look big, it may not look right, but I'm still fruitful. Fruitful in the storm. Amen. Fruitful in the good days and bad days. Fruitful in highs and lows. Amen. When you get that word in you, I'm fighting for this. So I recognize it. Oh, that, that's a spirit. I see what's going on. You got to tell folks, that's a spirit. You, you don't really mean what you're saying. Yes, I do. No, you don't. That's a spirit. If you, got a, if you get frustrated, if you argue with somebody and you say what you want to say and you still frustrated, that's a spirit. If you argue with somebody and you get something off your chest and you have temporary satisfaction, but you walk away and say, man, I shouldn't have said that. That's a spirit. If something is in you, you know you're not the type of person that hurt people. But you say stuff to hurt, that's a spirit. Come on. And I, I know God didn't put me in the earth to hurt people. I was talking with the daughter last night, Jennifer. I said, you know, I pray about stuff. He said, I said, because, hey amen, that's a spirit. Hey amen, I came up under. I said, I'm a dangerous person. I said, I'm good with my hands. So I don't want to fight nobody. Because I believe, mother, if I fight, the old stuff I've been trying to keep under the rug will come out. Then I should bring shame to the kingdom. I stopped talking about stuff what I want to do because it's a spirit behind it. Yeah. I started realizing some stuff I can't even joke about. Hey, 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 hey. Play with it. Because some stuff that you're giving birth to, you laughing and joking about it, the enemy says, hmm. So I started pulling back all that stuff. It'll come back and get you. The enemy is after the word. Tell them to the enemy after the word. If he get that word from you, Come on. If you get the word from you, I was talking to someone the other day uh, and several people this, this last couple of weeks, we've been talking about, amen, uh, believers who go to therapy. I said, I go to therapy. I believe in Jesus and I believe in therapy. I believe in the Holy Ghost and I believe in therapy. I was talking about, amen, because some of us say, I'm just going to pray. I want a therapist that prays. Y'all better come over here. I was talking to this, uh, this psychologist, mental health doctor, and I was talking to him, man. He started sitting back like I was the counselor. He said, you're very cognizant of where you're at. I said, man, this is what I'm dealing with. And I said, I need to talk to somebody to understand because I've been praying about it. But I need somebody to understand and give me some instructions. I said, I believe God sent me to this. And I was talking to them, and man, they started right now. And then they called me back a few weeks later and gave me the, the diagnosis. Said, you, got, you have anxiety. You got, I said, I ain't got no anxiety. He said, that fight or flight thing you talk about, that's anxiety. Oh, I said, really? That means when you bag me in the corner and keep talking about it, come on. <laughs> See, that's anxiety. Then I said, I don't like, I don't like, I'm a pastor, but I don't like to be around people. They started telling me what, they, they started telling me what all this stuff was. I said, I like empowering people. I like strengthening people. I said, but when I'm finished, I like to go by myself again. And they started diagnosing me. And here come that spirit of pride coming up. Nah, don't let them tell you that. See, a lot of pastors ain't going to say this. They want to act like we strong all the time, like we not human. I have a cuss where it's popular every now and then try to get out. I don't let them out, though. I still had a tendency sometime in the parking lot, somebody cut in front of me. I said, oh, I'll run over them. In the parking lot. Not in the street, amen. In the parking lot. And I told myself, this is a spirit. That is not normal. Everybody say that is not normal. There's some stuff that goes on in your life. You got to raise the alert on that thing. You got to sound the alarm. 
That is not normal. It's a spirit. If you let that thing stay with you, it'll start driving. Y'all remember them old folks? You say, if it, if it, uh, say no, if won't want to ride, but if you let him ride, he gonna want to drive. Don't let the devil ride, because if you let him ride, he gonna want to drive. That joke could be in the passenger. First, he start in the back seat. All of a sudden, he'd be on the passenger side. Be like, yo, man, let me drive for a little while. I know where we going. He'll take the wheel for you. He's an enemy of my faith. So the number one thing, the enemy is coming after the word of God. Y'all still with me? I didn't even want to spend that much time on the word, but that's the main thing. How many times have you prayed I need more faith? Come on. If I just had a little bit more faith, I can do this. Here's a revelation. You don't need more faith. You need more word. God has dealt to every man. The measure of faith, the not a measure, the required measure that you need. Amen. And so you have to add to what he's given to you. And I add to what he's given to me by getting in the word. I find my struggle in the word. The answer is in the word. But see, after I get the word, the second one, I'm going to stop at the second one today. There's about five of them. We're going to finish them. But the second one here, amen, the second enemy is worry. When I don't believe the word, I start to worry. We start worrying about other stuff. Don't, don't, don't be believing, amen, so you believe in God for something and he does not move in your timing. You go to the lion prophet, he say, this time next week, I see the Lord doing haircut of my shot. I hear the Lord saying this and this, and then next time next week come, it don't happen, you start worrying. And don't realize that the prophet can't put a timeline on what God's going to do in your life. He can give you a word that can confirm what God has said. Amen. But it's in your obedience is when that word going to manifest. According to your faith. Joker tell me something this time next week. I'm like, I ain't waiting the next week. I believe God going to do it now. Now faith is. Y'all better come on here. Matthew 6 and 33 talks about Amen. Well, 31, it says, amen, wherefore take no thought for your life, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? A world without shall we be clothed. Amen. Take no thought. Don't take no thought. Anytime we worry, it interrupts our confidence. Y'all remember we were talking about, amen, being confident, confident faith, casting therefore not away your confidence, that have great, great recompense of reward. Amen. Anytime we start worrying, Worrying is followed by anxiety. You start worrying. The scripture says, take no thought. Tell your neighbor, you got to take your thought. If it goes with you. Amen. Thought shows up and say, look, I'm going to give you a reasoning word. Word just pop up and they say, I'm going to give you a reasoning word. I'm going to make the car break down. Job going to be cut short. You start thinking, oh, what am I going to do? Instead of saying, God, if you cause this to happen, what door are you opening? If they shut your particular, not your, your department can be shut down. And you start worrying instead of thinking it's an opportunity for a promotion. We going up and not down. Somebody say, I'm going up and not down. If, if God changed something that he's put me in, I'm getting promoted. I'm not taking lesser. Somebody, at least I got something. I refuse to take less. You don't know, you gotta you know my qualification. They say take no thought. So when he say take no thought, he's saying what they're basically saying, don't worry. Don't worry. worry is followed by anxiety. And although anxiety can be good for some us sometimes, it can be a motivator, it can push us. Amen. If you and you, you get anxiety issues concerning your health, it can motivate you to do the right thing for your health. But too much anxiety can just disable you. Because you're worrying all the time, it'll shut you down. Make you quit. Worry is not my friend. I refuse to worry. That's an answer. When you stop worrying, watch this. When you stop worrying, people think you don't care no more. How many got people in your life that you're concerned about? And, and the way they are going in their life, sometimes it causes you to worry. You be having an anxiety issue for people, they don't even care about their life. I wish they'd do better. They think they're just doing what they want to do. And they're doing stuff hurting themselves, think they're hurting you. 
I used to tell my kids, hey, do what your pocket can handle. Okay. What that mean? I ain't coming to get you. Come on. I ain't coming on, I ain't spending no money. I ain't putting no house. I ain't putting no money on no books. If you do it, that's between you and that which concerns you. Y'all better come on here. A lot of us worry about folks that don't even care about you worrying. They know you got them. Or they know they got you. Uh huh. If I do this, dad gonna show up. My cousin them gonna show up. My big brother ain't gonna let me struggle. Yes, I am. You got the same opportunity I got. You don't care? I don't worry. I care, but I don't worry. I care just as much as you do. Y'all yeah, miss that. If you know it's gonna hurt you and you still do it, I care just as much as you do. No speeding. You speed it, get a ticket. Man, I've been having, I ain't gonna say bad luck. I just been having encounters with red lights lately. <laughs> I don't know if they don't like my truck or what. But this year, alone, baby. This year alone, I know it has been at least three incidents. And I tell y'all, don't drive through the yellow light. Practice what you preach, Senator. I see the light. I said, I'm just too close. I said, Whoo. Yes. You do this. <laughs> you ever see that thing on, 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 the, on the, uh, social media and it say three hours later or three weeks later? I go through that light. Two weeks later, the little picture in the mail. The back of your truck. Then they zoom in on your tag. Yeah, that's me. They were coming so frequently. I'm like, God, what am I doing wrong? You're violating the law. When we violate the laws of faith, there is a penalty. It's not because the devil is after you. You violate the laws of faith. And watch this. Watch this. Because I belong to God. When the enemy is raising his head, for some reason, God may have given him permission. You're so recognizable in your faith that the enemy goes and stands with the sons of God before the Lord and say, what are you doing? Walking to and forth and down in the earth, seeking who I may devour. Have you considered my servant Evelyn? Have you considered Mary? You ever thought about that? God did if this is a consideration test. Come on. And then God can speak for you. So you can touch everything they have, but you can't have their life. <laughs> so I don't care how strong the attack gets, he can't touch my life. So I'm going to keep on talking bad. Anybody been like me was in the world was bad? You're going to talk trash. You ain't gonna, you're not going to pass the first league, but you make me so mad they'll swing first. I'm going to keep on talking back at the enemy, telling him what the words say. I'm not going to tell him what my feelings say or how I feel about it. The word tells me, what did Jesus do in the, when he was tempted? Jesus didn't try to prove who he was. If thou be the son of God, make these stone bread. It is written. Man should not live by bread alone. By every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. If thou be the son of God. Cast thyself down lest you dash your foot against a stone. The word says, you shouldn't tempt the Lord thy God. <laughs> he told the enemy, the word says, you should not tempt the Lord thy God. You coming at me, and I'm your God. I control you. And some of us entertaining conversations, giving control to the enemy. I refuse to argue with the one that don't have the answer. You don't care no more. I care as much as you do. I refuse to give up my right. Say this with me. I refuse to give up my right. To live a faith-filled life. Everything God has promised concerning me is coming to pass in this season. Somebody say it again. In this season. Every promise, I see it now manifesting in this season because I walk in strong faith. Because of my strong faith, I'm going to have a strong finish. Come on, give God a praise in this place. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I just can't worry about what I can't control. I can't worry about what I can't control. If you get to a point where you trust God, when you get to a point where you trust God, there's some things that have happened for you, things you've been believing God for, that you gave up your right to because you didn't trust the word. Y'all catch what I said? You gave up your right to it because you didn't trust the word. Get your rights back. <laughs> I'll have some of them social media videos and people getting arrested. Hey, I know my rights. I know my rights. Do you know your rights as a believer? Come on. As a believer, we, we, we have the right to remain silent, but we shouldn't. Because anything we say can and will be used against us in the course of faith, in the course of heaven. So I'm going to say what's right. I'm going to say what the words say. Amen. Come on, accessing the course of heaven. I'm going to declare the word. Everything the word says about me, I'm accessing the course of heaven. Amen. I got, amen, a, a, a defending attorney on my side. And a prosecutor can't win in this case. Every victory, amen, that I give it up, I take it back. Anytime I give it up my victory, I take it back. I claim my children by faith, my grandchildren by faith. There's no struggle. Every financial thing that's been held up, been released in this season. Come on. They don't have to respond. I keep putting it in front of them. I'm going to keep living it in front of them. I'm going to keep living it for this, this, this church. Not for you all, but because it's my, my, my right. But if I'm going to be an example, Paul says, do what? Follow me. As I follow Christ. Follow my faith. Don't quit. Tell your neighbor, say, you already won. So why are you going to quit? It's a fixed fight. Mm. And I already won. <laughs> it's a fixed fight. <laughs> and I already won. You can't lose a fixed fight. Unless you get out the ring. I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm getting ready to stop, y'all. I'm going to use this illustration. I saw a video. It was a fight getting ready to happen. The two heavyweight guys. And this guy came out the back, the challenger. Hey Amen. He came out the back. He was all motivated. He did a little head thing. Hit himself in the chest and hit himself in the head. And got in the ring. You know, he slid through the second row because he was a big guy. Slid through the second row. Got up in there. Was in the corner bouncing. Then the guy he was going to fight came out. And he was a big old dude. He walked in there. The first guy went through the rope. He was a big guy, probably about my height, a little taller. But then the guy he was fighting and got up to the ring, and he looked at him across the ring. Then he stepped over the top rope. And they said his name, and he did a little chest thing. And the referee called him to the middle and said, this is the rule, boom, boom, boom. Go back to your corner. He said, you ready to fight? You ready to fight? They said, yeah. And they rung the bell. The first guy to challenge him, I just went back out the rope, walked down the long aisle, went back to the dressing room. Something in his head told him, not today. not today, I can't win this fight. <laughs> Something in how the champion presented himself challenged the facade that he put on when he came out. He thought everything in him that I'm going to win this fight until he got face to face with his opposer. My question is how many times you got face to face with your opposer and took yourself out of the fight? The opponent, the, the challenger, lost by virtue of him taking himself out of the fight. He didn't know how big that, because he was big, that don't mean he can fight. Just because he was a champion, you, you, ne you never beat nobody on my level. Come on, you, ain't cross, you, ain't, you, you haven't crossed me yet. Come on, it's your mentality, even in your faith. So I'm not stepping out of the ring. Whatever I get in the ring against, we're going all the way to the end. You better be strong, but you better have endurance. Amen. Run the race that is set before you. You got to have endurance. Amen. The Bible says, amen, we got to fight the fight. Like, like we got to be like a good soldier and do hardness. That's a good soldier. If I don't want any pressure, I can't win no fight. If I don't want any challenges, I can't grow. It could easily be easy, but I won't appreciate it. When I get it, too easy, I won't keep it. If you steadily feed people stuff and never allow them to access it for themselves, 
they would never know the process of winning. Are y'all hearing me? There's so many people I want to help do stuff. And I tell them about it. You can do this and you can do that. And they start making excuses. And back in my head, I'm like, man, I'm not even going to have this conversation. I just want to try to make people get it and get frustrated because they won't. Come on, y'all. But now, I'm saying, look, this is what's going on. This is what God said. This is your opportunity. If you want it, come and get it. But I'm going to keep on moving. The enemies of my faith. Recognize the enemies of your faith. The enemy come through people and things that have been influenced by something from another realm. It's never, it's never really the person. It's never really the person. How many of y'all ain't been saved all your life? Like some of y'all. Some of y'all been saved all your life. Never did nothing wrong. But we used to be under the influence of another spirit in the world. Come on. We passed a car this morning. My wife just started laughing. We was in the fast lane, and the lights changed, and we got stopped on uh, 431. And then we took off, and the light changed, and this car just starts. Pup, 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 pup. Everybody in the slow lane was passing by us. And she said, what's going on with them? And then she started laughing. She said, baby, remember them days? And I started laughing, too. Back in the days when I used to be under the influence of another substance. <laughs> You'd be driving, mother, hand on the wheel. Everybody passing by you. You think you're driving the speed limit, man. You in the cruising, 30 in a 60. You know, it was 60 then. You know, you did 65 back then, you would speed. You're 30 in a 60. People blowing at you. You're making everybody on the street mad. You're like, go around. And you're the one wrong. That's how we do it. We're on the, on the wrong influence. Everybody else is wrong except you. I finally came to the realization that I was the one wrong. Me and, me and Elder Harris was riding one day, and uh, we was sitting, went to the stop sign. He had this new car, and I'd never driven a car that much power before. We got to the stop sign, and we just sitting there. Called the car, somebody got it. Everything is clear. I looked over here and said, what you waiting on, man? I'm waiting on the, the, I'm waiting on the sign to turn green. <laughs> waiting on the light to change. He said, I'm waiting on the light to change. I said, man, it's a stop sign. He looked at me and got mad and said, where you drive in? I said, well, get out of the car. <laughs> I jumped over there still under the influence, both of us, and tried to drive his car like I drove my car and just stomped it. And the car just started spinning in a circle, deal like this. When he got back straight, I stopped the car, looked at him. I said, man, drive your own car. <laughs> the problem is neither one of us should have been in the car because yeah. we was under the influence yeah. of another spirit. What I'm saying is, when you allow the wrong spirit to influence you, it messes up your life. When I look back now and I thank God for what he's brought me through. Most of all, for what he's brought me to. And because I'm here and I understand how faith works, as a believer, it is my title deed. It, somebody say title deed. It's a title deed to, for me accessing the things of the kingdom while I'm yet here in the earth. I speak release over this house. I speak financial release. Glory to God. I thank God for repairing relationships and families. Hallelujah. I thank God that everything that's been held up is now being released. Hallelujah. I thank you he, that he's maturing you. Amen. That you understand that everything he puts in your hand is for you to glorify him. Every sickness, every disease, every ailment dries up now in the name of Jesus. I pray against generational curses, ungodly soul ties. Now, we release the faith of God. Hallelujah. To cleanse our thoughts, our processes now in the name of Jesus. Not just in this room, but even those that are watching online. God, we ask you to set a watch at our mouth so that we don't speak anything that will interrupt your plan. Set our feet like hind feet that we won't back up, Lord God. Put us in the posture of receiving all that you have for us in this season. And say that we serve notice on you. You are a defeated foe. You are a fallen angel. You're concerned more about us than we are about you. We thank God for his grace and his mercy to get things right in this hour. Father, we honor you. We praise you for apostolic alignment and prophetic placement in this season. 
We are in the place that you've called us to be. We are doing the things that you've called us to do. Everything in our life is on prophetic assignment. And it must come together now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give God a hand praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're standing. I'm not going to keep you all today. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all enjoy the word. I hope y'all did. I preached to myself today. Y'all didn't have to say Y'all didn't have to say amen. I preached I preach to myself today. But how many of you can realize, realize that there's some stuff that's supposed to happen for you? You talk yourself out of it. The challenge. Your faith being challenged, talk you out of it. Or you entertain the enemy too long. Negative thoughts too long. Today, this ceases now. Just to go ahead and say it, it ceases now. Every, everything in my life that's been messed up, amen, we, I'm cutting it off. I'm not just cutting it off, at the root. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Everything. So those of you that are dealing with all these different issues and things, take it before the Lord. Go through your processes for full deliverance. Be set free. But refuse to speak negative concerning your own life. Amen. Anyone here today desire special prayer for any reason? I know most of us here, everybody here is saved. Go to God. If you're not saved, amen, we always want to pray for and with you. Amen. If you're not saved, if you're in a backslidden condition, we want to pray that you will come back to the Lord. We want to rededicate your life to the Lord. If that's you today, we want to make space for that. If you're here, amen, we want you to come now that we can pray for and with you. Amen. Even online. Hallelujah, if you, need, if you desire prayer or salvation, pr- salvation, you put a one in the chat box. Glory to God for rededication, put a two in the chat box. We have people monitoring, amen, for that specific purpose. Someone will contact you that they can pray for and with you.